it's ego here and welcome back to my youtube channel i hope you're all doing really well um it's a very noisy day today in my otherwise usually quiet neighborhood so i apologize in advance for any background annoying background noise all the cars have just decided to come by today and pass by the front of my house today so i apologize for that anyway today i am making a new dress but it's been so difficult to film and like so lately so I decided to try a new tactic and what I'm going to do is take you on the journey of the whole execution of the dress from start to finish so that it won't feel so tutorial like that's what I'm going to do today so I actually just ended my real life work day and right now it's 602 and I'm wondering how long it'll take me to finish this dress but we're going to find out together and I really hope you enjoyed the rest of this tutorial let's go so for this tutorial, I'm going to be using this really old stretchy fabric that I've had for a, I've had it for a really long time now. So I'm going to be using it to make this dress. And let me show you the dress that I'm trying to make. So this is the dress that I'm trying to make. It's a simple cow neck dress with ties. So at first I thought maybe I would actually be lining the dress because it's a little, it's a little see-through, I mean. You can see me, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's a little see-through, but then I decided not to line it because this dress, I'm actually thinking of wearing it during the summer when I'm on like a, not the vacation vacation, but like a mini vacation. So based on how I picture how I'm going to be wearing the dress, I don't think I will need to line it. It's not that kind of dress. It's not like supposed to be like a proper, proper dress, it's supposed to be something light. And another reason why I decided to line it is if I need the dress to be more conservative, then I could just wear a petticoat or underskirt and it would work the same way. So that's why I'm not lining it. Plus I'm trying to save myself some work. <laughs> so for this dress, we're going to start with some pattern cutting and I am using the bodice block that I have made here on my channel. So check that out if you want to learn how to make your own bodies block. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description box. So I'm going to be making the dress pattern using the this bodice pattern as a base for it. And you're also going to need to get some matching thread. This is as close to matching thread as I could get. I think I have something a little darker than this. I'll search for that, but yeah, this is as close to the fabric as I could get, but I think this will work. I'm also going to be using my ruler and my pattern master. You can substitute this with a regular like curved ruler and a pair of scissors. Fabric scissors and paper scissors. If this is your first time on my channel, then I'm going to say this, but if you are not new here, then you know I've said it before, have two pairs of scissors. Sis. Have two pairs of scissors. Have, basically, have one, have a pair of scissors for cutting fabric and another one for cutting paper. Don't use your paper to cut fabric and don't use your fabric to cut paper. Yeah. And then the last thing you're going to need is your sewing machine. So, with that being said, let's get straight into the tutorial. So, I just want to quickly explain something before we actually get into the sewing. And that's what you notice is that on a basic bodice block like this one, you see that I have made allow I have made allowances for darts, and the and for this dress, the fabric itself is stretchy, so I'm not going to be using a zipper for it. But it also means that I won't need these darts. So in making the new pattern, the pattern for the dress, in making the new pattern, I'm going to be getting rid of these darts. I just wanted to explain that in case I forget to go into that detail later. Paper, this is like my basic like bodice block. This is the foundation for most of the patterns that I make. So, so to transfer this onto the pattern paper that I'm going to be using to make the dress, I'm going to be using this pattern paper. As you can see, it's translucent paper. And because it's translucent, it makes it very easy to transfer patterns and measurements and markings from other more opaque, darker papers onto this one. So that's one of the reasons why I actually like using this particular paper 
for transferring not for the main block just for transferring so I'm just going to take this paper lay it on the on my body's block and then and trace out all the necessary parts Okay guys, so I have traced out the main parts of the bodice block, right? I've drawn out the upper chest line, I've drawn out the bust line, the waist line, and the hip line. So this is what I was talking about earlier. But so what I'm going to do is mark one inch here, which is this one inch that I put here. So we're trying to get rid of this, take this away from the side, right? So I'll mark one inch, which is the same measurements at from here to here and I'm just going to connect this line all the way down to the point that is perpendicular to this point here and I'm going to do the same thing all the way over here so that we will get rid of the darts and the extra dart measurement that we added to the bodice pattern but that's not the only thing we're going to be doing after doing that in order to make sure that the stretchy dress actually fits that means I have to sew the outfits a little like smaller than my actual size so what I'm going to do is take away one inch allowance all around so the top is a cow neck top which means from the chest upward we're not going to need that part so I'm going to cut out all of this Now I've marked all the new points. I have taken in the waist measurement and I've taken in the hip measurement because I'm working with stretchy fabric. So I have reduced all of it by one inch at the waist and I took in about two inches at the hips. But that's because my hips are pretty small and I also took in one inch at the bust. So I'm just going to connect these new measurements together. All the way to the upper bust okay and then using the pattern master or the curved ruler I am going to curve instead of drawing a straight line from the hip I'm just going to curve this down a little all right guys so based off of what I showed you that I wanted to make you probably noticed that the dress is really long. My table is not big enough, so I'm going to be transferring the work that we're doing to the floor so that I can now cut out the pattern and then transfer the pattern to fabric. So the rest of the tutorial is probably going to be worked on the floor until I get my sewing room situation situated. So this is the waistline right here. So from the waistline, I want this dress to be 40 inches long, so I'm just going to mark, I'm just going to extend it all the way down by 40 inches. So this is the full dress. This is what the pattern looks like. So right here is what i was talking about so i'm going to be cutting at the bust here we're going to i'm going to cut it all the way straight and then fold it so the folded part is going to extend from the upper bust all the way to the waist and that's going to serve as a lining that's also what's going to give the whole the cow neck effect we have the pattern ready i'm just going to go ahead and cut it out and then transfer it to the fabric.
like I said, we're going to be working with the busts, working with the bust measurement. So this is where it, like one the cowl effect to show. So I have gone ahead and I have extended this line. I have drawn four inches above this line. So this is going to be our new neckline. And this cuts across the sleeve area, the old sleeve area, which we're not going to need for this top. So to double the top part, to give us the cow effect, cow neck effect, I'm just going to fold this across along that line, the new line that is that I've drawn that is four inches above the upper bust line, the chest line. Okay, so now I have all the pieces. It's time to transfer all those pieces to fabric. It's time to cut out the fabric. Okay, so I have gone ahead and I've cut out all the pieces and I'm just going to lay them on top of each other, front side facing each other and pin them together and then carry on with the rest of the work. But I really underestimated this fabric. I thought I had more than I actually do and I had to like maneuver my way around the cutting of the fabric because it turned out that I really didn't have as much as I wanted considering like how long I wanted the dress to be. But we made it work, which is what really matters in the end. I persevered and I made it work. So let's start pinning all the parts together and see what we have. Okay guys, so I am done with all the pinning and I really like just got into the groove of this so every instinct in me wants to start sewing, really. But I have an early start tomorrow at work and this fabric just because of how stretchy it is and with all the ribs and nibs that it has on it, it just feels like it's going to be one of those fabrics that will give me a bit of a hard time. Like it won't be the worst fabric to work with but it won't exactly be the easiest one to work with either. So I'm just going to call it a night. It is 10.18. So I'm going to stop now and I'll see you guys tomorrow. But it's all pinned on both sides and it's ready to be sewn. So that's that's basically all that's left. So I will pick this up tomorrow. Good night. Hi guys. So I am done with work for the day. So I am now going to go ahead and continue the work that we started yesterday. It has been a really long day and I hope I have enough energy to actually finish that project. That's a lie. I do have enough energy to finish that project. So let's get to it. We have joined all the pieces together. So I'm going to head over to my sewing machine and start sewing. So as you probably expect, because this is stretchy fabric, I'm going to be sewing the stitches using a zigzag pattern. So I'm just going to play around with the width and I'm going to put that on the highest. Uh, for length, I'm going to keep it small. I want the length to be really, really tight. And then I'm just going to switch this. Oh, it's already on a zigzag stitch, yeah. So this is... This is normal, it's usually on a straight stitch. 
so I'm just going to switch that over to a zigzag stitch and now we can go ahead and start sewing. So guys, we are done with sewing. I've sewn the um, straps, I've sewn two straps, and I also sewed two loops. So these two loops are going to go behind the dress, and that's what the straps are going to go through. So I have grabbed the safety pin, and I'm going to use the safety pin to turn these inside out. So if you've been on my channel before, then you've probably seen me do this many 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 times just put it through like that close and then we're just going to run it through the fabric all the way to the other end of the fabric turn it inside out all right guys so we have the ties ready now i've gone ahead and i've made the ties now it's time to attach it to the top of the dress so like I said, we have worked on the bottom of the dress. This is the bottom of the dress. So I'm just going to push all this down. And what we'll have is the top part of the dress. I put both pieces on top of each other and I've pinned them down around the side. So what I'm going to be doing is adding the straps to these ends. So I'm going to take one end of one strap and I'm just going to pin this in place. I'm going to go now and sew it all around like this and then after doing that we'll flip it out all right so once it's sewn on all four sides I'm going to cut out this excess ties flip it right sides out all right guys so I've gone ahead and I've put the dress on to try and this is what it looks like. So I left a little allowance at the back here. I haven't sewn in the waist here. So this part I'm going to fold in and I'm also going to be attaching the tie, the one that's at the loop at this side here. I've gone ahead and I've hemmed the bottom of the dress. And so I'm just going to sew the waistline closed, sew that flap and add the loops. It's 8.08, .08, which means today alone, I have spent about an hour and 45 minutes on this dress. Honestly, the dress didn't take that long. Combining this and yesterday's time, it took about seven hours, but most of that was because I was filming. I think if I wasn't filming, I'd have been done making this dress a long time ago. So the filming is really what took a long time. So I'm just going to go ahead, finish what's left, add those little loops, and then I'm going to style the dress and glam up a little bit and show you guys the final results and if you've watched all the way to this point i want to just say thank you for being patient and i really hope you enjoyed the video if you did don't forget to subscribe give the video a thumbs up let me know in the comment section if you would like me to film this style of video that is like you know less of a tutorial and more of like a sew with me vlog i actually enjoyed doing this it was a lot less pressure to make things perfect you guys coming on the journey with me so if you would like to see this this type of videos on my channel again just let me know in the comment section all right i love you guys so much so much